This is Nurse Amy, also known as Amy Alton, and I am from the website doomandbloom.net. And here today we're going to talk about how to grow tomatoes. Obviously you can see I'm having some great success. They're growing beautifully and the leaves look very healthy. But let's start from the bottom up. What would you want to use as soil? Now I personally only grow organically, so I use a mixture of organic soil and I use half of that mixed with something called coconut core. Now this comes in a big compressed brick and you have to put this in a bucket without holes in it and add water and you'll see as you would add water that this expands into a huge amount of coconut core. Um, once you've got your coconut core rehydrated, then you can do that 50-50 mix. I personally use large storage containers. They're cheap, they're easy, and I can replace them without crying because my beautiful pot is now ruined. So I take these storage units and I drill one quarter inch holes all around the bottom. We're talking 10 or 15 on one side, 10 or 15 on the other side, and maybe five or six on each of the ends. And I go from about uh, eight inches from the bottom up and just randomly drill these holes. Now these quarter inch drill holes are perfect. They don't get clogged as easily and um, they allow the excess water that instead of saturating the soil that the root systems are setting in, it drains. So the moisture in the soil maintains a nice even amount. What you don't want is a muddy situation and you don't want a dry situation. So even moisture is very important. And on that subject, let's talk about watering. You need to water not every single day unless you have a very small pot. Once you're utilizing a very large container, you can slow down your watering a little bit. There is a problem with overwatering, and there's also a problem with underwatering. So the larger the container, the less frequently you have to go out there and actually water your plants. So pick the biggest container that you can fit. Make sure you put in organic soil mixed with coconut core if you can find some. And drill the holes so you don't have the saturation problem. In the summer when we have very heavy rains in South Florida which comes straight off the Everglades here, our soil will be just mud puddles if I didn't have holes in it. So the holes are very, very important. Don't forget that aspect. Also, don't overcrowd your tomato plants. I have made this mistake. When you are creating your seedlings and starting off in small cups, which I'll show you in a little while, red cups, I drill a hole in it, maybe a couple of holes, fill it again with the same type of, of soil, half organic, half coconut core. You get all these beautiful plants and you say, oh, I want to plant them all. That is a problem. You're going to have crowding and you're not going to get big, beautiful plants. There have been times when I first started planting tomatoes that I put eight plants in this one container. That is too many. Now I limit it to two or three. I even have one pot that currently has one tomato in it. And it's probably gonna be much happier than the other tomatoes. So don't overcrowd very important. Um, when you are adding micronutrients and fertilizers, again, think as organic as you can. Now I grow comfrey and that's what these are. These are comfrey leaves. Uh, comfrey has your, your three basics, your nitrogen, your potassium, and your phosphorus. So you have your NPK, but it's also great with calcium. And what I just do is just take these leaves and I just tear them up into tiny little pieces, just like this. I also do this when planting my uh, potatoes, by the way. As you just take some of these leaves and you just put them in the bottom where you are planting the tomato. They will degrade. I also put red worms in all of my containers so that they eat and they produce natural worm castings, which are wonderful for um, fertilizing and you can buy worm castings if you want, or you can just keep feeding the worms that are in your containers. Now, how I do that is by adding things. This is a homegrown banana. You're gonna say, well, that doesn't look real great, but you know what? 
it looks just perfect inside and tastes great. So if you got some bananas, I just add the peels. Now the peels have potassium, great for tomatoes. So use fruits and vegetables, anything you don't eat. I grow a lot of uh, lettuce, which I'll show you in another video. If I have leftover lettuce, leftover carrots, any kind of uh, peels, uh, orange peels. Um, I had a grapefruit the other day. Took the grapefruit peel, cut it in some different sections, planted it inside the pot. And all I'm doing is finding little areas where there's not a dense root section and almost like making trenches on either side. So you're going parallel to the root system along the sides. And I'm, I'm putting these peels in. I'm putting the orange skin. If you make eggs, crush up those eggshells. Again, calcium is really wonderful for your tomatoes. Another thing you can use for pesticide control, I am growing, and I don't think you can see it in the corner, but I have a very large neem tree over there. It is not producing fruit and seeds yet. However, I can take this neem plant, use the leaves, kind of crush them up a little bit, put them in a five gallon container of water and let them sit in this hot sun for a week or two, I will have some neem tea. So you can use that as a spray. Excellent pesticide, love neem. You can buy it in a lot of your garden centers. It just says neem on it. And it's this really stinky, I would say, it almost smells like peanut butter. Reminds me of a peanut butter smell. But neem oil, Use that for your organic pest control. Take a bottle, I reused one of my Castile soap bottles with a spray. Fill it up with water. I have fish growing in my pond, so I use that water because it's got some fish poop in it. Again, another great fertilizer is some fish emulsion. Fill this up with water. Add about half a, teaspoon, uh, half a tablespoon to one tablespoon of neem oil. It's gonna be really greasy inside, so you're gonna have to shake it up really well. And the reason I got this bottle is because I do use the Castile soap. Now this is a peppermint, great for pesticide, and this one was tea tree. Uh, instead of the Castile soap, since you're already using the neem and it is a little soapy, you can go ahead and add some essential oil of tea tree or peppermint makes a great pesticide. And so you would just put those products in, close the top, give it a good shake, and then just spray evenly over your plant like this. You're gonna be amazed at how well this works. You don't have to do this daily. However, since it is an organic product, it's not going to last as long as your commercial products for pest control. So you are gonna to have to do it more frequently. You don't have to fuss a lot with your tomatoes, but you should look at them. You should make sure that you're eyeing everything. How do the leaves look? Uh, how is it growing? Is it blossoming? Is it time to put a different kind of fertilizer? Another fertilizer that I do use is Epsom salts. This adds the magnesium, and you can put also in a five gallon container of either your pond water or, or just some water. Uh, about, I'd say, a uh, half a cup is probably a good. So, and you're just going to pour that into the lee, uh, the, excuse me, the uh, dirt. I would use that after you've watered partially. Then add this, probably about a gallon of water for one of these containers is good. And then I would continue to water so that you're sort of moving that down. If you start off with this Epsom salt on dry soil or something that's not as moist, it may tend to stay towards the top. So you want to soak a little, then you want to put this, and then you want to go ahead and water that down in really, really well. There are dry organic fertilizers. These are a little harder to use once you've planted. Uh, they're better to mix in the soil before you plant. But again, if, I, if I'm using this once a week, what I'm doing is I'm making trenches on the side. I'm digging up maybe three or four inches of soil that don't hurt the roots, putting this fertilizer in and then go ahead and put the soil back on top and then watering so that it goes down into the deep root systems where the plant is gonna pick up the nutrition when it wants 
can't force feed these things. So these are some of the things that I use to uh, do pest control, uh, also disease control. Neem is good for disease control also. And I haven't had any problems, serious problems with white fly, a, a few here and there. I haven't had any aphids, which I in the past had had real, real problems with. So don't overcrowd your tomatoes. Make sure you put holes in the soil. Uh, try to grow as organically as possible. When you get the blossoms, now I have a screen patio here, so I don't have uh, the natural pollination that most tomato growers have when you have them outdoors. You don't have little visitors as much. I do have some lizards that live here, but they're mostly to eat bugs. So what you're gonna need to do is rattle the cages. So what I do is I just go like this. And I give it a little shake. If I see a branch that might not be shaken too much, I just kind of flick it a little bit, give it a little shake. I'm not violent with it. I'm not trying to make the tomatoes uh, that are already hanging on the plant fall off. You can see some of these here. Another little hint that's been really good for me is plant steaks. And these are actually biodegradable, which I was really happy to find. And you can just write what your tomato is and when you planted it. So this will help keep an eye on uh, which ones you have planted. I do have several varieties. I know people like to keep their one varieties together. I intermingle. I haven't had any problems with tomatoes looking different than what they should look. Like this is the uh, black print, so this is going to have a little bit of a, a blackish look to it. I haven't had some of my red tomatoes show up with, with black stripes or black spots or anything. So I think it's okay to put your different varieties together. I wouldn't worry about it so much. Uh, now the heirlooms are great because you can save their seeds. And I do. Again, I use the red cups. I start them much earlier than I'm going to plant. Look at your planting time. Everyone has a different grow zone. So see where it's great for you to start your tomatoes. Plant them in a greenhouse or start them indoors prior to the time that you can plant them. So you got a good head start. They're nice and healthy. As far as pruning goes, I know a lot of people prune the suckers, and I have done that in the past. This year I wanted to do a little bit of an experiment and see how is this gonna affect the fruit? Am I going to get less blossoms and fruit, or am I gonna get about the same? And so far I would have to say I have about the same. And to tell you the truth, they are much healthier. I'm worried that this pruning that we're doing opens up an area on the tomato plant that could allow diseases to get in. So is it a good idea to prune? I guess you're gonna have to go by your own experience. I'm going to see this year what happens when I don't prune and I feel like I'm having less issues with diseases and I haven't done too much uh, as far as changing how I'm growing. I'm using the same containers, the same soil, um, the same type of fertilizer. So my variable that's changing is not pruning. So we'll see. So go ahead and, and give these a little shake if you're not outdoors and have the natural uh, pollinators to do this. Um, very important thing with watering. I do have my water on here. You don't want to blast your plant. You also do not want to wet your leaves with water, if possible. If it rains, it rains. There's nothing you can do about this. But you are not going to shoot this water onto the plant. You're going to water the soil. And that is also going to help prevent diseases. So you want to get right into the base, get the water down there, and just water the soil. Now I'm going to stop there because I want to keep talking. but. You need to water the soil until you see some water come out of the holes that you have drilled. The reason you want to do this is if you stop before the water reaches there, those deep roots that your plant might have down there aren't going to get any water. Water moves down because you've put more on the top. If you stop and your water is only an inch deep, not much of that is going to go much further going to kind of stay there and then the plant's not going to get enough water so you really need to do a good soaking I'm not saying to make it muddy but when you see the water start to come out of the holes 
all around. Adjust where you're watering. If you see one section that is draining but the other section hasn't done that, go ahead and stop. And keep an eye on the moisture level. Don't overwater. If you've got small containers, again, I said you can, you know, you may have to put it in every day because you feel the soil and, oh, it's dry. That plant has sucked up all the water from that five gallon container. That's why I use these. I believe these are about 33 gallons. So I've got much more volume for these roots and much more soil to be able to hold the moisture and the nutrients. I think if you do everything that I have said and whatever else has worked for you, that you're going to have some beautiful tomatoes organically and very healthy plants. This is Nurse Amy again, Amy Alton from doomandbloom.net. It was really nice to talk to you and I'll see you again soon. Bye.